Our scripture, our gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. It's found on page 1304, 1304. Jesus said to his disciples, don't be worried, have faith in God and have faith in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. I am going there to prepare a place for each of you. After I have done this, I will come back and take you with me. Then we will be together. You know the way to where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't even know where you are going. How can we know the way? I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus answered. Without me, no one can go to the Father. If you had known me, you would have known the Father. But from now on, you do, not, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. Jesus replied, Philip, I have been with you for a long time. Don't you know who I am? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How can you ask me to show you the Father? Don't you believe that I am the one, that I am one with the Father, and that the Father is one with me? What I say isn't said on my own. The Father who lives in me does these things. Have faith in me when I say that the Father is one with me, and I am one with the Father. Or else, have faith in me simply because of all the things I do. I tell you for certain that if you have faith in me, you will do the same things that I am doing. You will do even greater things now that I am uh, going back to the Father. Ask me, and I will do whatever you ask. This way, the Son will bring honor to the Father and I will do whatever you ask me to do. Amen. Too much baby food there. Okay. I wanted to focus today on being a witness for Christ. Uh, because I was, the, the reading from Acts today really struck me. Uh, in 1985, there was a movie starring Harrison Ford. It made its debut in 1985. The movie was called The Witness. The story was about an Amish boy that traveled to Philadelphia with his parents. And while he was in the train station, he went into the bathroom and he witnessed a brutal murder and saw the murderer. So Harrison Ford, he was the investigating officer and he shows the boy's mug shots and the boy cannot be, he can't identify the killer from all these mug shots. But there's a paper on the table, and he notices a picture in that, that on the table, and it was an officer in that area who was um, involved in the illegal drug trade. So because the boy saw something and he knew something, that, um, that put his life in danger. And today we read in Acts about a young man named Stephen. He was, a, he was a witness to the power of Jesus. And his life was put in danger, just like the boy in the movie, because he saw something, because he knew something. Uh, and the differences in the stories, is, the difference between the two stories is that they don't end the same. Uh, we don't know a lot about Stephen. He was a young man, and the Bible says... He, a man full of faith and of, full of the Holy Spirit. Stephen was the first of seven. Uh, Stephen was one of the first seven to be chosen by the disciples to help distribute food. And in Acts, he 
Um, we also read that he was full of God's grace and full of God's power. And he performed great wonders and signs among the people. Stephen was a witness to the power of Jesus. Stephen knew what Jesus explained to the disciples that we read today uh, in John chapter 14, verse 10. And I want to paraphrase. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So to see me is to see the Father. Stephen witnessed to the power of Jesus. And because he believed, he performed great miracles, as Jesus said, people would do. <clears throat> Jesus said, very truly I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And because of the witness of Stephen, uh, people, the people in power uh, kind of knew they were going to lose their power if this took root. Uh, so just like the Hollywood movie, uh, Stephen uh, was a witness, and now he's in danger. As Stephen was about to be stoned, he cried out, I see Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. That was too much for these people to hear. He was only witnessing to what he knew was true. So then he's dragged out of the city, and as he's being stoned, he cries out in a loud voice, and he says, Lord, do not hold these sins against them. These are powerful words that pierce right to my heart because these are very similar words that, that Jesus cried out at the crucifixion. Jesus cried out, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, standing there at the stoning of Stephen was a young man named Saul and he approved of the killing of Stephen. Later, when he became Paul, I think this event moved him deeply. Uh, and it moved him uh, because uh, Paul wrote a letter to the Colossians. And some scholars believe his words to the Colossians were in reference to Stephen's death. Uh, Paul wrote, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You have died and your life is now hidden in God. When faced with a mob that wanted to kill him, Stephen set, set his eyes on things above. And when he did, he saw Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. So, as I stand here today speaking, I am not here to make people believe in what I believe. I'm not here today to tell you how to believe in exactly every part of your faith. I am not here because this is a lifelong dream of mine. I actually do not like speaking in front of people. When I get done at 12 o'clock or 1215, whenever I get done, I'm going to go home. I'm going to need a nap. I don't feed off of being in front of people. I, I like to make people laugh because it kind of just takes the edge off of having to be in front of people. But, you know, the power of Jesus has transformed my life in so many ways. And I am a witness to the power of God's word. I have seen miracles. Jesus, uh, just a few weeks ago, I was speaking to a good friend of my mom and dad's in Forked River. Um, and now they're great friends of mine as well. So I guess I should say I was speaking to some really great friends that were really good to my parents when they lived there. Uh, and a few weeks ago, she was telling me that her son and her daughter were trying to adopt the baby. Turns out it was for over two years they were on the list. And the, the, they came to them and they said, we have great news. A parent has picked you out. They want you to take care of their newborn baby. The baby was born premature. The baby was born addicted to drugs. Uh, and they were so excited that they were finally getting it. But then, as things usually go, the one agency has to talk to the other agency, has to talk to the other agency, and 
then they have to go to court, and then they have to go to another agency, and they just lost all hope. They, they just thought, this is, you know, their, their, their hopes and everything were dashed. So I prayed together with our good friend, and I prayed for her children. And on May 1st, they got their three-month-old baby boy, uh, who's about nine pounds now. <laughs> and I know that uh, the baby has a new family that will do all in their power to see this baby thrive. That's my witness to what I've seen God do in our lives. Uh, we do not have to be defenders of the faith. If you, if you could do it, I marvel at some of the apologists out there that are just so great at defending the Bible. I'm not one of them, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but I don't have to be. I, I wish I could be a great evangelist, like maybe Billy Graham. That would be really cool. But I don't know if I'm that great an evangelist. And I'm pretty sure I'm not. But each of us, each of us here, should always be able to witness to the power of God in our lives. And this week I challenge all of you in the midst of struggle to hold on to your faith. God has always answered my prayers. Not always the way I wanted. <laughs> Sometimes it's answered a little differently, but God always answers. Um, God is always there for me, and God is always there for all Christians who stand in need. And we need to stand ready to testify to the power of God in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Just by us being here today, we witness to the power and the grace that you give to us. And Father, we just pray that uh, our eyes will always be open, and that our eyes will be fixed on things above, that we will grow uh, in, in knowledge and in love of you for what you have done for us by sending your Son. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.